Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2 with my good friend and partner, Art Kirsch, and our favorite medical expert, Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, good to see you. Likewise. Hi. So, Dr. Liz, I was wondering, do you make New Year's resolutions? Because, uh, and if you do, do you keep them? Do they fail? Am I, are you mortal like the rest of us? <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely mortal. You know, it's funny. I was doing a little research about New Year's resolutions, and I discovered that only about 40% of people make New Year's resolutions. That surprised me. I would have thought it would have been higher. But I think the reason that it's so low, less than half of people, is because most of us know that New Year's resolutions usually fail. <laughs> to answer your question, I don't make New Year's resolutions. I guess I'm in that majority of people who don't. I do set goals. So that's interesting. We can talk about that, the difference between goals and resolutions. I definitely set goals for the new year. Okay. Now, so, what is the difference? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't get the difference. And Okay. So here, here you go. They're related, first of all. Okay. Resolution is a general overarching theme that you choose. And it usually has to do with doing something different or stopping doing something. Maybe it's going to be quitting smoking. Maybe it's going to be eating more healthy. Maybe it'll be doing more exercise. So it's a general theme and it tends to not have very specific details, which brings us to goals. Goals, especially when they are smart goals. And the three of us have talked about smart goals before. They're specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're realistic, and they're time-based. That's a SMART goal. It's very specific. So if I say I'm going to cut down my smoking to one pack per day by January 31st, and then I set dates throughout the year, and I have someone else that's a, that I'm accountable to that I have those goals, or if I'm going to eat better or if I'm going to lose weight and I set a very specific goal and an action plan. That's the other piece that's the big difference between goals and resolutions is goals are general and they don't say exactly what the actions are, while goals are very specific and have action steps attached. So, right, and it's easy to... Okay, go ahead, Art. No, no, John. I, I was going to say that it's easy to make resolutions because this not a lot of specifics to them. <laughs> exactly. I was also, I was shocked to learn that about one in five Americans, almost one in five Americans will go on a diet in the month of January. And by about the middle of January, they will have given up. Yeah, well, I would suggest uh, uh, from my past experience- or 90%. That you don't sign up for a gym or a program uh, for six months or a year or for a diet program uh, in January, <clears throat> because the likelihood is that you're going to have 12 months of payments and you're going to drop out after about two weeks. So that's been uh, my experience. <laughs> but that's how they make their money, Art. You're you're putting a, not a good dent in the economy that way by saying that. <laughs> Those gyms are counting on those January signups for people who don't end up coming later. You bet. You bet. Oh. So medically speaking, is uh, the the stuff that we do in every January, setting goals and making resolutions, is that good medically? I mean, I, they, they always sound good. You know, lose weight, stop smoking, that kind of stuff. They sound good. But um, if you don't do it, does that is that can that be harmful? I think it can definitely be psychologically harmful, right? You set yourself a, a, a an idea at least. I almost said a goal, but if it's a well constructed goal, and you have support, that vastly increases the chances of actually reaching your goal. To your point about whether to do it in January, 
especially in my specialty, I help people lose weight and get healthy and feel good energy. And in that scenario, what we want is to be able to do that throughout the year, as you are saying, right? They're really, January is essentially the only month out of the entire calendar year where there isn't an occasion on which we are supposed to eat or eat a particular food. It starts right up again in February with chocolates for Valentine's Day and heading into the spring and Easter and Mother's Day and Father's Day. I mean, I, I can just go around the entire calendar year, right? So it's not a bad time to start if you have a good structure and a good plan in place. Well, I sort of... Uh, uh... The, the, probably the biggest thing I ever did was I was a very heavy smoker up until about 30 years ago. And I had uh, uh, quit once or twice. Uh, and it just didn't work because the way I see it now, because I, I've been a non-smoker for 30 years, uh, is it doesn't happen until you're ready. It doesn't happen when you're nagged. Uh, it might happen if you go into a program, but most programs fail. But I just woke up one day and said, I know it's not good for me. And from that day on, I was a non-smoker. Just literally, uh, I had no uh, nervousness effects or anything else. So I see that New Year's, for whatever you're going to do, is 365, sometimes 366 days a year. And uh, that's when you should start, is when you're ready. Exactly. I think that's great. And that is the number one people, the number one thing people can do for their health is to not smoke. If you're a smoker, definitely a goal of quitting smoking is an excellent goal. Also a goal of decreasing smoking is also good for your health. Well, John, you're not a smoker. So what can, what Never. Any possible, what's it, any possible thing that you could possibly do to improve your life? I don't know, Dr. Liz, I'm so perfect. I, I don't know that I really need any resolutions this year. <laughs> that's wonderful. I think that's really great. One thing that you could do that I do like to do is to pick a theme for my year in terms of a word. This is a fun and interesting exercise to do. A couple of years back, my word for the year was consistency. And I simply set myself to be more consistent about what I was doing in my activities at my office, just be consistent, consistent with my exercise, not kicking butt like I did when I was in my 20s and doing super intense workouts all the time, but whatever I was able to do and be consistent about it. Uh, another theme that I've had has been launch. Last year, I launched a book. I published a book. I was doing different things with my business, so I'm not quite sure what my theme is yet. I'll, I'll be working on that. Good. Well, that's a good advice. I'm going to try to find a theme. I, I like that idea. Oh, well, John, uh, why, don't you, a theme. why don't you and I try to do something together because we spend so much time at least talking together. Is uh, Why don't we have lunch every day? <laughs> now, that's my kind of uh, resolution. Good. I like we'll that. We'll be consistent with that. Okay. Yeah. But in my case, that lunch should only be water and salad. So maybe that'll help. All right. Okay. Dr. Think, Liz. We've Dr. Exhausted Liz, this. this. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, your advice has been very good. And, and uh, reflecting on the fact that we, I don't know, is it cultural? We tend to try to make resolutions or is it uh, internal? We want to be, we want to get better. We just don't always have the willpower, but I like, I like your definition of goals, and I think that's important. That's how you can be successful, setting reasonable yes. goals. Yeah, exactly. Even great. if you make a if you make a resolution, make sure you break it down into some parts and have some goals that are with dates and throughout the year that are on the calendar that you can look at, and you can even get support from others to help you fulfill your goals and keep on track with your resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.